Let's imagine for a second you're feeling a little bit naughty and you want a simple little white bread sandwich, a sexy little grilled cheese, or a juicy little BBW, I mean BLT. But the supermarket bread is so nasty that not even tender loving, hard discipline can make it adequate again. Then of course there's only one thing left to do. Make your very own, no funny ingredient, exceptionally, ridiculously delicious and easy white sandwich bread. Like a baby mammal, we start our journey with a warm jug of mother's milk. In the vegan case, it would be water or chicken's milk. Dry active yeast, although any yeast will do. Sugar, alternatively malt extract or honey does the same thing. Salt goes in against all rules. But just take it easy and close your eyes. All will be goody. Give that all a good stir until well combined. Set aside for 5 minutes. Until everything is nicely dissolved and happy being together. It's best doing this in a dough mixer and using either a dough hook or spiral dough hook similar to this. This recipe will work with all purpose or bread flour. Here we have a bread flour with a basic protein content of 10%. It'll always say it on the side of the bag in the nutritional values box. You also want to make sure it's simple white bread flour instead of wholemeal which will require a different approach. Into a mixer bowl goes all your plain Jane flour followed by the milky yeasty mixture. Turn your mixer on low to start bringing the ingredients together. Then turn up to medium speed and mix for 10 minutes. Keep an eye on your mixer, as some of them, especially KitchenAids, likes to run off a cliff. Once the dough has come together, you add the butter. If you're vegan, you can use fancy vegan butter or chicken fat. Whichever way you go, mix until well incorporated and smooth. Should take about 5 minutes. And when done, it'll not be sticky nor dry. Oil up your work surface with a bit of neutral oil. Dump your dough onto it and give it a few slap and folds. Slap and fold. Easy. Then roll it into somewhat of a tight bowl, talking dirty to it and giving plenty of love throughout. Oil up a bowl or simply the mixing bowl you used for making it. Pop your dear friend into it and cover up with a wet towel. Create us kryptonite or whatever you want. Set aside and let it rise for about one and a half hours at a warm room temp or until doubled in size. Meanwhile, let's talk baking vessel. Here we have a Pullman style tin. This one is 24 by 12 by 12 in centimeters or 9.5 by 4.7 by 4.7 inches. Link below for one like this. Otherwise, you use any other alternative like this plain old quarter size gastro or a simple loaf tin. For extra tasty, you want to butter the whole tin. That includes the lid. If you use a gastro, you need to cut some baking paper to fit the inside. Otherwise, the thing will stick and tears will follow. <laughs> Oil up the tray as well as the paper. Trim any excessive excess paper until you have yourself something like this. Set aside and back to the dough, which should now be nicely proven. Do not smash out the air. Instead, oil a work surface then gently dump your dough onto it, top smooth side hitting the bench first. Next you want to work it into a rectangle and squeeze out any air bubbles. Fold it like a letter and turn it 90 degrees. Oil a rolling pin and roll it out so the length is about the same size as your bread tin. As usual, you roll from the center outwards. Pop large or small bubbles as best you can. If at some point it resists, simply cover and rest for 5 minutes. You can shape or roll it like a baguette, which I have a video for. Or simply just roll it up super tight, like I'm doing here. Go slow and try and keep the whole thing as evenly shaped as possible. Apart from proofing it properly, shaping is the most important part to making most breads. Keep the tension and pop any visible large air bubbles as you go along. Remember that tiny air bubbles will expand, which will leave you with very large holes in the final bread. Good for ciabatta, bad for sandwich loaves. Once you have a log like this, we need to close up the seam at the bottom. Simply pinch it all along the length and make sure it's properly connected and closed off. The ends are not as important to close, but I like doing it anyway. Simply pinch it close and make sure the dough is sealed tight. Once done, you should have a little floppy, limbless, headless, dough torso like so ready to go into its final resting place place the dough into whatever container you decide on using close with plastic wrap if it's a tin with a lid so you can see how it proves if it's a simple bread pan or gastro use another bread pan turned upside down set aside in a warm place the proof will take about one to two hours depending on the temperature plenty of time to heat the oven up to 200 degrees celsius or 392 degrees fahrenheit 
You want the dough to pretty much come up to the top of the tin, but not over, because otherwise you won't be able to close it. To make a long story short, close the tin and bake for 40 minutes, no fan. If you bake it open, place a pan with boiling water in the bottom of the oven. Once done, it will have a lovely bread, tanned to perfection, as if it's just been on a summer holiday. Make sure to pop it on a wire rack and let it cool down completely. The open tin version will be just as delicious. And of course, have the trademark love handles popping over tight jeans look. The crumb shot is what you all came here for. So, let me not go over 11 minutes here. And would you look at that? A super soft, almost honeycomb crumb. Waiting to sandwich your deli ham. Or orange marmalade with heaps of clotted cream. I have videos for all of these, which you will go watch after this, of course. What we have is a soft crumb. Light as a feather, yet holds itself fully together. Even when bruised and abused. And yes, we'll give it a deep, sensual, sniffy mix sniff. And on that note, you probably wonder how to make the world's best burger buns. Which is why you need to go and watch this video, right here, right now, which will show you exactly how to do that. Thanks for watching, love you long time, bye bye.